Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Reva Ramadurai, Director of the Thermo Fisher Scientific Junior Innovators Challenge. And I'm here with my colleague, Alex Grace. And we are so glad that you could join us for today's webinar. Um, Alex and I run the Thermo Fisher JIC competition. You've probably already received a few emails from us um, and we'll continue to send reminders, updates and helpful resources throughout the application process. So you're here because you competed at your local science fair and won a nomination to the Thermo Fisher JIC. That means that you are among the top 10% of sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students in the United States. So congratulations. Winning a nomination is a huge honor and no small feat. Um, today, we're gonna talk about what that nomination means and the next step, which is completing your application to enter the nomination competition. We know the application might seem like a lot of work, but we're gonna show you some tips for how to tackle it in an easy way. Remember, you've already done the hard work by doing your research project, so you've got this. You might even find that filling out the application is a really fun process, and just by submitting one, you have the chance to win prizes. If you have questions today, feel free to type them in the live chat box on the right-hand side of the screen. We'll answer questions at the end, and you can always email us at jic at societyforscience.org at any time. As a reminder, we're here to help you. There is no such thing as a dumb question, and we're not the judges, so don't worry about impressing us. This session is also being recorded and will be on our YouTube page, so you can look back on it and other students who cannot join us today can also hear this information. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started. Um, Alex will share slideshow, perfect. All right, so just a little bit about the Thermo Fisher JSC program. So the, this competition is a program of the Society for Science, um, which is the organization that Alex and I work for. The Society is a nonprofit dedicated to expanding scientific literacy, effective STEM education, and scientific research. The Society's vision is to promote the understanding and appreciation of science and the vital role it plays in human advancement to inform, educate, and inspire. We do this by hosting science competitions and publishing Science News, which is an award-winning flagship magazine with the most important science news from all fields and applications of science and technology. Science News Explores is the society's award-winning publication dedicated to students, parents, and teachers used by nearly 4 million visitors each year. So in addition to this competition, the Thermo Fisher JIC, the Society runs two high school STEM competitions, the Regeneron International Science and Engineering Fair, which is the world's largest international high school comp science competition, and the Regeneron Science Talent Search, which is the nation's oldest and most prestigious STEM competition for high school students. Thermo Fisher JIC is made possible by our friends and sponsor, Thermo Fisher Scientific. Thermo Fisher is committed to nurturing generations of STEM professionals that more fully reflect our society and embrace their diverse perspectives and ideas to fuel innovation, advance science, and solve the world's most complex problems. Great. All right, so let's now talk about the competition. The Thermo Fisher JIC is the premier national STEM research competition for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade students. From 2011 to 2002, 2022, the competition was known as Broadcom Masters, but Thermo Fisher Scientific began their sponsorship in 2023. If you were familiar with the competition before this year, nothing about the core competition or process has changed, just the sponsor. The first part of the competition consists of a written application where you tell us all about your research project. In the application, you'll also be asked to describe your hobbies and interests and respond to a few creative essays. Judges then review all of this information to ultimately select the 30 finalists that participate in the second part of the competition, Finals Week. You'll learn more about that in just a bit. All right, so how do you become a Thermo Fisher JIC finalist? The first thing you have to do in order to be considered um, is to complete a science or engineering project. So you have likely already completed that step, so check, great job. Um, you must then enter your project into a society-affiliated science or engineering fair, 
And you can check if there's an affiliated fair near you by searching our Find a Fair website. That's findafair.societyforscience.org. Again, since we're now in uh, almost April, a lot of you probably already did this step too. So check, Congratulate. congratulations. Um, next, you're gonna receive a Thermo Fisher JSC nomination by placing in the top 10% of, of projects at your fair, um, which again, already done, congrats again. The next big step, which is what we're gonna talk about today is completing and submitting the online application um, by June 12th, 2024 this year um, at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So if you've not already opened an application, you can do so by going to thermofisherjsc at smapply.org. We'll have links um, to websites where you can find all this information at the end of our slideshow as well. Um, and then once you've applied, you're in the running to become one of the top 300 junior innovators. From those top 300, the judges select 30 finalists who are invited to come down um, to Washington, D.C. to participate in finals week of the competition. Um, and during finals week, we're going to talk about that actually on the next slide. So, Alex, you can advance to that. Um, we do a whole it's a whole lot of interesting and fun events um, that we have planned here in D.C. So um, what does it mean to be a finalist? Like I said, um, finals week takes place here in Washington, DC in October. Um, we announced the finalists on September 18th. The top 300 are gonna be announced on September 4th this year. Um, so this trip to Washington, DC is an all expenses paid trip. Um, and finalists are then invited here to present their research and compete in a series of hands-on team challenges. Um, this is a great time to also mention that the entirety of the Thermo Fisher JSC competition is absolutely free to students. There is no cost to submit an application. And if you're selected as a finalist, there is no cost for a finalist to come down to Washington DC and you get to bring a parent or guardian with you again um, to no cost to you or your family. All travel, accommodations, and food, et cetera, are all covered. Finalists have a chance at winning some pretty cool prizes. Um, all finalists win $500. Um, their schools each get $1,000 for STEM initiatives. Um, you can also get have a chance to win other cool prizes if you make it further um, and win prizes at finals week. Um, we offer iPads and uh, stipends for STEM summer camps to students. Um, we have grand awards ranging from $10,000 to our first place award, the Thermo Fisher Scientific Ascend Award of $25,000. Um, but really the biggest prize we always say that students walk away with is that you're making new friends for life. You're forging new connections with peers that are just like you from all around the country. Um, and it's such a unique opportunity and experience um, that you get to have. So. If you wanna know more about finals week and how judging works, I recommend checking out last year's intro webinar that we did in 2023. And you can also watch our highlights video to see what finals week is all about. Now we're gonna go on to our top tips for completing your application. All right, on to tip one. Our first tip will help you set yourself up for success. You must read through the official rules before you start your application. You can find the PDF on the home page and resources page of the application and on the Society website. If you've already started or submitted your application, you can still go back and read through the rules now. The official rules go over eligibility requirements, what you must submit in order to complete your application, the ethics statement, team projects, visual aid guidelines, and science fair paperwork. It has a lot of information, so it's really important that you read through it, and you can always email us if you have questions. So we're not gonna go through the whole rules document right now, but here are some general FAQs um, that cover the main points that we wanna highlight. Um, so one common question that we get is about team projects and whether applications um, for team projects are submitted separately or together. Um, each team member does have to submit a separate individual application to the competition and work on that application independently. This is because the application looks more 
at ju than just your looks at more than just your research project. Um, so we want to see the judges want to see your individual strengths and accomplishments, and you want those to stand out. Um, so we know that your answers in part three, which is the project essay question section, will look similar to your teammates' um, responses in that section. Um, but that's okay. We ask that you just try your best to write those those answers um, in your own words. Nominees also frequently ask if they can add more data to their project once a, their science fair is um, completed um, and include this additional data in, in their application. Um, that's totally fine. You can definitely add more data to your application um, as long as the method and the intent of the project stays the same. So that means you cannot change, you know, your research question or your engineering design, you know, your variables um, and the things, the criteria that you have should remain the same. Um, so your project is essentially the same project that you competed at, right, at your local fair, but you're just doing more trials of the same thing. That's allowed. We also get a lot of questions about the visual aid. Um, and again, the official rules document is gonna be your best resource for this. But essentially the visual aid is just an opportunity for you to share visuals about your project, whether it's images or figures or charts or tables, you get to decide what you wanna share with the judges. So it's limited to two pages because um, you only have so much space even on your science fair board, right? Um, and it must be uploaded as a PDF. We don't allow pictures of your science fair project board. Um, it's just not recommended because it won't show up clearly in the application system and it'll be hard for the judges to read. Um, so we um, also recommend that you keep your visual aid um, to no more than three visuals per page. <clears throat> Again, just for ease of reading it and making sure that it's everything, your graphics are clear to the judges who are gonna be evaluating your project. Um, you can also refer to the images and graphs in your visual aid when you're writing about your project. For example, when you might be talking about your methods, you could say, see figure one in the visual aid for a diagram of this, um, and then name that diagram. Um, so those are just some tips and tricks for the visual aid, but again, make sure you read through the rules document um, to get all of your questions for that. And uh oh, I think we lost Alex. So bear with me for a second while I reshare the presentation. Okay, I think we're getting it up just one minute. It looks like we have Alex back too, but I'm about to share my screen, Alex, so We'll resume in a sec. Always some kind of technical difficulties with the webinars, right? Uh, all right, there, go back to slides. Okay, I think this is where he picked off or uh, stopped. Let me just just here. All right, all right. Go ahead, Alex. Yep, take it. All right, sorry, folks. <laughs> okay. 
Awesome. Tip number two. Uh, although the application deadline isn't until June 12th, we highly recommend starting your application as soon as you've received your nomination. This way, the details of your project will be fresh and your motivation will still be high. The number one thing you can do is to start is register for an account and enter your FAIR passwords so that you gain full access to the application. If you don't know your FAIR password or you entered it incorrectly, email us and we'll help you. We'll just need your name, the name of the FAIR that nominated you, and the city and state where it took place. We will keep emailing your parents or guardians and teachers until you submit with encouraging messages. So just try. You never know. Just by submitting means you have a chance to be named a top 300 junior innovator and finalist. We also recommend that you submit early. You can always edit your application even after you submit until the deadline on June 12th. So even if your application isn't perfectly how you want it, you can work on it later knowing at le we at least have your completed application. You have nothing to lose by submitting. To edit after you submit, click on a task, click the three dots in the upper right hand corner and choose edit. Make the edits you want to and then make sure your click mark is complete. You won't need to click submit again. All right, so our tip number three is to tackle the application in parts. The application may seem long at first, but you can always save your work and pick back up where you left off. So I recommend trying to complete um, parts one, two. Oh, I just realized that the presentation is not showing up on YouTube for whatever reason. Um, I'm going to pause again for a second. Nope, oh, just kidding, apparently it is. All right, I think we are good to go. Um, if everything, if something does not look right to you, please let us know in the chat, otherwise we're gonna continue. Um, so, like I was saying, um, we recommend trying to complete part one, which is the registration, um, part two, which is student experience, and part five, personal interests, first. These sections just ask for basic information about yourself, your school experience, and you know what hobbies and extracurriculars um, that you're a part of. So it should be pretty straightforward and quick to finish. And then you can also really easily knock out the um, upload a par uh, parent or guardian permission form task. Um, so once you have all of those four done, you're already halfway through all of the tasks. So that's gonna be, it's gonna feel great to get that much done right, right, right away. Um, and then you can worry about the slightly longer tasks next and plan out how you're going to do them. Now Alex is going to talk about that tip next. Our third tip is to use the application planner, which we provided in your digital nominee packet. Make sure to email us if you didn't receive the link to the nominee packet from your fair. You can fill it out in the PDF online or print it out. We hope this helps you manage your time and enables you to complete the application before the deadline. You have worked so hard and you should reward yourself each step of the way. Whether it's by listening to your favorite song, doing an activity you love, or enjoying a special treat, we hope you make time to celebrate the small wins throughout the application. All right, tip number five. So the application asks about your project, your interests, and critical thinking skills. This probably feels overwhelming. It's a lot of information to provide, but we have tons of resources to help you. We have created videos to walk you through each section of the application, which you can find on our YouTube channel and in the resources tab of the application. Know that you can always email us with any questions you might have. Our YouTube page also has blogs from former alumni. If you're looking for some motivation and inspiration, take it from alumni who were in your shoes not too long ago. It's worth applying. Many alumni felt just as unsure about how far they'd go as you feel might, might feel now, but you'll never know if you don't try. Stay tuned for a new alumni webinar later this spring. You can also read blogs about our alumni by visiting the Society website, clicking on Press Room, and then Blogs. Then use the search bar under All Blog Posts to find blogs about middle school alumni. And as a reminder, if you're looking for those blog posts, the competition was formerly called Broadcom Masters, so most of the blogs will refer to it and have that name in the title. All right, so tip number six is about getting your science fair paperwork together. So this is an important 
part of the application because it helps us know that you were being safe when you conducted your science or engineering project. Um, we are basically gonna, gonna ask that you submit any paperwork that you might have completed um, and submitted at your local fair. So um, these, this paperwork usually talks about, you know, what safety measures you followed and who gave you approval to do your project before you got started. Uh, in the application, you're gonna be able to let us know where you conducted your research, who approved your project idea, um, what types of permissions you received, and whether you use certain materials like hazardous chemicals or um, uh, microorganisms. So if you completed paperwork at your local fair, you'll have the chance to upload it here in the application in this, um, in the Science Fair Paperwork section. So if you don't have your paperwork now, here's your reminder to go and hunt that down. Ask your science uh, teacher, um, go back to your local fair. The earlier you get it, the better. So you're not finding yourself scrambling at the last minute if you don't have it and need to submit your application. But that being said, if you can't get a hold of your paperwork, you can also have an adult um, that supervised who supervised your project um, or gave you permission, you know, gave you the approvals to do your project, write us a letter and sign it. Um, and that letter should say that, you know, should describe what safety measures you followed while you were conducting your research. Um, and just let us know how you were being safe, um, where you conducted your research, again, who, um, uh, if you had any pre-approvals, what those approvals were. Um, the official paperwork is best, but you do have a second option, so I don't want to stress you out too much. Um, and remember, the point of this section is really just to make sure that you were safe with, when you were conducting your research and that anyone who was working with you, if you had, say, human participants testing a device or taking um, a survey, that those participants were safe too. So this paperwork just helps us verify that. Tip number seven. Our next tip is for when you get stuck. It can be difficult to put your thoughts into written words. So we recommend thinking about the application like a judging interview, something you're all very familiar with. You already had one at your fair, so you already know how to answer these questions. Try to answer the questions out loud. Speaking your thoughts aloud is a helpful way to get them organized and eventually written in form, and eventually in a written form. If you hear yourself say the answers, you'll know what it sounds like to your readers. Think about it as if you're having a conversation with someone. You can also try recording yourself and playing it back. You might even let someone else listen to your answers so you can practice getting your ideas across. Just remember, you should always be the one coming up with your answers. Definitely. Um, and kind of along those lines, our next tip is uh, about creative essays. So um, our tip is to stick with your gut. We know they can be scary, but you don't have to worry about thinking too hard on these, um, this section of the application. So through these essays, the point is to showcase your personality, your creativity, um, and your critical thinking skills. And you might even find that the prompts are fun uh, to respond to. Some essays in this section are optional. Um, and so you don't have to write anything down for those optional questions if you don't feel like you have anything to share for the prompt. They truly are optional. Answering them um, is you know, not gonna give you uh, a bump up if you don't have anything worthwhile to say, right? So don't worry about it too much if you don't have anything to say for an optional um, question. Um, for the solve a problem essay question, one thing I wanna mention is that you do not have to do extra research for this, for these two prompts. Um, the judges are looking for how you might solve a problem that you don't know a lot about. We know that the, those questions might be talking about research areas that, you know, your science fair project isn't in, and that's totally okay. Um, again, the judges are just looking for how you might solve something uh, or approach a problem where you don't know a lot about, but looking at, you know, your critical thinking in terms of how you're going to try to find a solution. And just remember, um, there, it's A, perfectly okay not to use all of the words in a word limit, in the word limit either. That goes for the project essay section as well. If you can describe your project or your methods or your analysis in a very short, succinct way, that's great. You don't have to use all of the words that we're allowing you to use. Um, and 
just remember that there are no right or wrong answers when talking about your personal story and your interests for these creative essays. Just try your best. We want you to just be yourself. We ask you a lot of questions in the application so the judges can get to know you and the work you've done. Having a teacher or parent or adult review things, review your work for things like typos is perfectly fine and recommended, but the application should be in your words and reflect your interests in your work. All right, and our very last tip is to celebrate. Um, you, once you submit your project, your application, congratulations, it's a huge achievement. Um, this is a really big deal and you're gonna get prizes in the summer once you submit your application, um, including a t-shirt, a bumper sticker and more. Um, and so we really just wanna make sure that you feel proud of your accomplishments. Not only have you done a science and engineering project this year, not only have you complete, competed at your local fair, but you filled out a whole application about it. And that's really something. Um, all uh, nominees who complete applications are also automatically um, in the society's alumni network. So that's a great perk of being of completing your application as well. Um, so really you have nothing to lose. Hopefully this, this webinar and these tips help you um, Help, it make, help make it easier for you to tackle the application and go ahead and submit by that deadline. Um, all of you as nominees make us so proud um, through your perseverance and eagerness to change the world through STEM. We know this is just the first step in your long journeys wherever, they, wherever this takes you, um, but we do hope you submit an application. So with that, um, I know there have been a lot of questions coming in through the chat. So Alex and I are gonna take a second to take a look at them. But go ahead and put any questions you have in the chat in here. We're going to start answering them. And while we answer them, I'm going to share this slide here just in case you have questions. Some of those helpful resources I was talking about, our nominee page has um, the link, the direct link to the application. It has um, our PDF of the official rules. It has a PDF of the application too, if you just want to preview it. Um, Within the application, once you've opened it, you'll find um, a resources page that has uh, our past webinars and we'll have this year's webinars, the excuse me, the recordings linked on that page as well. And we have a general FAQ that goes over some of the things that we talked about um, in today's webinar, some things that we maybe didn't, but if you have questions, that's gonna be a great resource for you um, to visit as well. And of course, you can always email us at JIC at societyforscience.org. Right. So a lot of questions about judging. So I'll answer, I'll answer this kind of generally in a few different parts. Um, the judges are, select, are a panel of six to seven judges at the finalist level or during finals week that are invited to come to DC with you all. Um, and they are experts in a, a variety of STEM fields from across the country. Um, so those are, are who's judging during finals week. During the first part of our evaluation stage, we recruit evaluators from, again, all across the country, a lot more because we have a lot more applications, right, in the first part of it. Um, but again, these are all experts in their fields um, that will review your projects. So if you're particularly, you know, doing an animal science project, for example, where we get a team of um, uh, animal science specialists, right? People who do that kind of research that can read and understand your, your um, applications. In terms of what judging looks like during finals week, I definitely recommend looking back at our um, webinar from last year. Um, I believe it's either the intro webinar or, or, or um, one of the other ones, but that talks about kind of what to expect during finals week. Um, you're judged not only on your research project, that's a portion of it, but then the bulk of activities actually throughout finals week are those team challenges that I mentioned. So you're going to be placed in a team of you and four other students um, with differing background um, expertise, right? So you might have people who have done um, an engineering project or a math project or more of a life science focused project. And you're going to be tackling uh, 
challenges in all level in all fields of STEM during the week. Um, so your job is going to be to work together on those. Um, really, the judges look look at teamwork, how well you communicate, um, your leadership skills, um, how just how well you understand the scientific knowledge being presented in those challenges. Um, so judging for during finals week is not just about your research project, but again about those um, those team challenges. We don't share an official rubric for um, uh, the applications, but what I will say is that the judges are looking for how well you can explain your science or engineering project through your application. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be the most sophisticated advanced research, you know, so that sometimes is a myth that you have to have done um, your research project at a lab or you've had to have, you know, um, a mentor help you. It, it can be a simple project that makes it really far because you understand what you were, you were doing, your re research methodology was clear um, and that came through in your application. So the judges are looking for that. that. They're looking at, um, again, how well your critical thinking is. Do you understand what you did and why you did it? What are the perks of being in the alumni network? That's a great question. Um, you get connected to other alumni who have been through the competition. So especially as middle school students, this might be something that's going to be really useful for you later down the line when you're looking at um, getting, you know, connecting with others that can help you with your research um, that you're trying to further or just get advice on, you know, academics, colleges, things like that. We host meetups in different cities as well throughout the year. So you can meet up in person. Um, and that alumni network is a actual, you know, online network that you can connect with folks through. Um, so that's great. Um, in terms of, do both team members have to make an application? Yes, um, that is a question that we always get, but each team projects are accepted into the competition um, with teammates of up to three. So, that should be a rule already at uh, all of the local affiliated fairs that you all are competing at. Um, but again, each team member of that team project has to open and complete their own application. And again, that's because you're, you're individually evaluated throughout the competition um, and you're evaluated on more than just your research project. So that's why everyone, each member of your team project has to complete their own application. Um, a question about the permission form section. So the directions state that an ethics form should be signed. Where can we find this form? Um, I will double check that. That's actually, if, it, if that direction is there, it just means that there's an ethics section in the permission form itself. So by signing that form or having your former guardian sign that form and upload it, you're good to go. There's no separate ethics form. I'll make sure that the directions in the application um, clearly state that, but just that one, um, permission form is all that you're going to need to upload in that task. Okay. Um, can you include research that you collected after your original affair? Yes, you can include research, um, include research after your affair. Um, oh, sorry. I think I misread that question. If you're including data, that you've collected after you've competed at your fair, that's okay. If you're changing your research in any way, shape or form, um, that would not be allowed in the application. We want you to be submitting the application um, based on the project that earned you the nomination. So if you're changing your research project at all, if you're already moving on to you know, the next step, I know a lot of folks might have done their, uh, have competed locally in February and are already thinking about their next year's project and ways to change it or improve it. Um, you shouldn't be including that part in your application in you know, the results and the methods and that part of it. However, there is a question in the application that asks about next steps um, and you know, what you might think to improve or change in the future. And that's where you can talk about any of those potential changes that you're thinking about for um, the future, even if you've already done them, 
we recommend that you write about them in that section because if you're changing anything, you know, one of the big things that we worry about is uh, those science fair, that science fair paperwork and any pre-approvals that you might need to get before you actually start that research project or that additional research, I should say. All right, we'll just take one or two more questions if any others are coming through. And if we don't get to them today, please email us um, at JIC at societyforscience.org and we will definitely answer them. So a great question about the visual aid here. Should you write things like an introduction, methodology, or discussion on the visual aid, or is it no words um, excluding captions? Your visual aid should really be just visuals. Um, you don't need to include an intro methodology conclusion section because all of that is already going to be in the application itself. So rather than take away space from your visual aid with those extra words, um, you really just want to highlight the tables, the the charts, the figures, any, excuse me, any of the visuals that go along with your application. So I would not include those other sections and the text on the visual aid should really be just captions, titles, um, think short descriptions, right, of, of what you're presenting. Another question just about team projects and, and the application and similarity. Um, try to use your own words when you're answering those questions in part three, which is your project essay section. Um, that's gonna be your best bet yeah, when you're completing the application. All right, so I think we've run through uh, most questions here. Um, if we did not get to your question today, definitely email us at JIC at societyforscience.org um, and we'll be happy to answer your question then uh, or there when you email it to us. That's always an option. And again, I hope you check out some of those resources that we had um, listed up as well. There's tons of resources that we have online, both just on our website through the past webinars, our blog. So hopefully you take advantage of that. Um, but again, thank you all for joining us today. We hope you feel a little bit more excited and prepared to complete the application. Um, and again, you should feel really proud of yourselves for how far you've already come just to get to this stage. And we want you to know that you have what it takes to keep going. So with that, thanks again, everyone. Um, Hope you join us for our next webinar. We'll be sending emails out about that um, as they get scheduled, but definitely check back in on the website and uh, check your email for our, our next one. So thank you all. Hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. <laughs>